Now let's talk about step three. Let's just call it incubation again. And this time, remember we've got them, these eggs sitting in an incubator inside petri dishes. And whether it's whether we do it because of I V F, where we simply put uh, twenty to forty thousand modal sperm with each egg, or whether we do it with ICSI, they both come back to the incubator. This is all occurs on our day zero. So then on day one, we pull these embryos out out of the incubator and we're going to look at them under our microscope and we're going to turn around and see if we've got two pro nuclei in each of these eggs and it will be the same whether it is through IVF or ICSI. Those that are fertilized then are going to go back into the incubator and they're going to stay to day two. Now remember what we said about day two is that it's going to produce uh, where these guys are to be in stage. Now we're into the uh, what we're going to call the two to four cell stage. But we're not going to look at them. They're staying in this incubator without any interference. Then we're going to come back down to day three and we're going to pull these embryos out of the incubator, look at them again under the microscope, and we're going to hope that we're going to find eight cell embryos at that time. It's on day three, then, we're going to transfer. Uh, you have to understand that in our program, we do day three transfers. Other programs do what are called day five transfers, and those are the blastocyst stage. Okay, let's talk and let's call this step four and we'll call it transfer. All right, so we're back to this. We'll have the female come back into our facility. And if you remember what we talked about earlier, by day three, normally the embryo is up in about this area of the oviduct. But we're going to have load a catheter uh, that is hooked, attached to a syringe. And then we're going to put the embryo into that catheter, and it's going to be passed up through the cervix, through the uterus, I'm sorry, vagina, cervix, up into the uterus, up close to the fundus or the top portion of the uh, uterus. And from there, the one or two embryos will then be released and transferred up into this region. Again, this is our technology. Other laboratories have slightly different methods of doing that. We had talked about the fact that we gave our patient FSH and LH to produce more eggs than the typical one or two. So it would not be unheard of to have 15 oocytes retrieved. We have somewhere around a, let's say, a 60 to 70 percent um, fertilization rate. So if we multiply those numbers, let's just say, let's call it um, by 67 uh, percent, that will give us 10 zygotes or 10 eggs with 2pn in them. Now, 
Under most circumstances, we then turn around on day three, we're going to transfer two eight cell embryos and that will leave us with eight embryos left over. What do we do with those eight embryos? Well, the patient tells us what she wants or he wants to do with them, and what the process is is we either turn around and we uh, discard, we or we can cryopreserve those embryos. Oftentimes, patients want to cryopreserve to, or freeze those embryos. Now, the problem lies that oftentimes half or so of those embryos die. Okay, they will die um, because what happens is we will turn around and keep these embryos growing. These are our eight embryos, but we're going to turn around and by day five, we're going to want to, let's say, how about this? CRY cryo preserve or freeze. Yes, if I could write pretty, you could see that it said cryo, C R Y O, cryo preserve um, the remaining embryos on day five, and it could possibly even go to day six if we need to. And but what happens is we lose about four of them, so that only leaves us four left. And it would be these four, then we would turn around and cryo preserve. And so that's what happens with the remaining embryos. And with that comes the end of our story about ART. Thank you for listening.